man, this is Deion Dawkins, man, and you're listening to The Scoop on OwlScoop.com. You already should know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Scoop, OwlScoop.com's podcast, season eight, episode 34. We are, are up to episode 34 now. We haven't been always keeping track of the numbers because we've had a couple of... Uh, special editions of the podcast with our Joe Klecko interview, which you can still listen to the future pro football hall of famer and former temple New York Jets star. And then of course we did a Monday night episode of the scoop following the news of Aaron McKee and temple parting ways. And now we're doing what I guess we would consider our regular weekly episode. I'm John DiCarlo and Javon Edmonds is with me today. Caden Steele and Kyle Gauss off this week. So again, it's just, uh, it's the two of us. How you doing, bud? I'm fine. I don't know why you like switched up your voice and made it two shades deeper to start the intro. I did? Uh, yeah, you did. But hey, listen, I won't argue if that's your thing now. <laughs> Feel free. We were talking uh, old school music on the radio just now. Um, so, you know, you're just feeling like Melvin Franklin today. I have no problem with it. <laughs> it's been a long week. Maybe uh, maybe life has, has beaten me down at this point. Well, I'm here for you if you need someone to talk to. I will. I will bend your ear. No, uh, but it has been, it's been an eventful week. A reminder that the scoop is now brought to you by Greenspan and Greenspan Injury Lawyers. If you have been injured while on the road or highway and the crash was someone else's fault, the insurance company will not be on your side. You need us, Temple Law grads, who will fight hard to get the compensation that you deserve. We only get paid if we win. In Pennsylvania or New York, call us today at 215 215- 261-7359. That's 215-261-7359. And you can find them on the web at greenspans-law.com. That's greenspans-law.com. Last week we did talk to, to Mike Greenspan, a Temple graduate, Temple Law grad, and he was able to share his Temple story with us. So it was great to have Mike on. Great to have him and his firm as sponsors of the scoop. So we do have a packed show for all of you. Of course, we'll be talking a little bit more about Temple's coaching search uh, as Temple searches to replace Aaron McKee as its basketball coach. So we've got a little bit more to talk about there. We are hoping to be joined in a few minutes here by Deontay Christmas. We had Deontay on earlier in this season on The Scoop. Deontay had talked to, to Mike Jensen from the Philadelphia Inquirer earlier this week. I was talking to him about Matt Lang, and we wanted to talk to Deontay about his thoughts on not just Matt, but what he's looking for out of the next Temple basketball coach, whoever it may be, and what he thinks that next coach needs to succeed to get the program turned around. Deontay has also been coaching at Christo Ray with Kyle Sample and uh, really seems to be having a lot of fun up there. So we were hoping to catch up with him soon. We've got a little bit of spring football to talk about in a very full mailbag. We haven't talked to uh, numbers, our little quirky intro thing here. We didn't talk famous 33s last week, and we got 34s this week. I mean, we got a lot of famous 33s and 34s. What comes to mind, Javon? Patrick Ewing, Scotty Pippen, Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson in college. I want to go. I want to acknowledge Hersey Hawkins, who was my favorite. My I like favorite that. Fixer, who was not Charles Barkley or Julius Irving or Allen Iverson. Love there the you go. Um, 34s, Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. Paul Pierce. Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan. Oh, yeah, I'm missing some people. Did Earl Randy Campbell? Johnson ever wear 34? Ooh, that's a good I question. I could be wrong. Did he wear 44? Baseball purists everywhere. He definitely did. Oh, he definitely did wear 44. Um, yeah, Campbell. Bo Jackson wore 34. Yes, he did. He did wear 34. Yeah. You know who we missed on the 32s? Marcus Allen and Blake Griffin. We did. And yeah. every once in a while, when we miss a, a famous number, Pat Egan from 97.5, the fanatic, who's one of our uh, occasional mailbag contributors, will usually remind me when we when we screw up a name. We did say we were going to talk again about uh, Temple's coaching search. Again, it's ongoing, of course, unless there is a shocking piece of news within the next hour. No hire has been made just yet. A couple of names of interest are available to interview now. 
after last night's NCAA tournament games. We've, of course, talked about Colgate coach and former Temple assistant Matt Langle. Colgate lost 81-61 to last night to Texas as the 15th seed. So their season's over. Uh, multiple sources I spoke with about Matt have said that he wouldn't be talking to anybody about potential co- coaching openings until their season's over. So maybe things will pick up there. Another name we mentioned on our Monday night podcast uh, is that of UNC Asheville head coach Mike Morrell. His team, also 15 seed, lost to UCLA last night. So their season is over. Now, as we mentioned Monday night, he has a connection to Arthur Johnson in that he was an assistant at Texas from 2015 to 2018. UNC Asheville went 27 and 8 and won both the uh, Big South regular season and Big South tournament championships. He's also been an assistant at uh, VCU. Charleston Southern and Clemson, and he was their director of basketball operations there from 2007 to 2010. So he's had a couple of notable stops in his career. Uh, another name that, I, honestly, Javon, I can't remember if we mentioned him Monday night, this whole week's been a blur, uh, is that of Kentucky assistant and uh, former Drexel head coach and UMass head coach Bruiser Flint. Uh, more than enough people I trust have told me that he would be interested in the job. I'm not sure yet if that interest is mutual. Um, some Temple fans may not agree with me. I think Bruiser is definitely worthy of consideration for the job. I know some people will criticize him and say that he should have gotten Drexel to the tournament more often uh, or at all. I, I think Bruiser could be very relatable. I think he'd be a good recruiter. I think he would want the job. I think it, it goes without saying, but I think especially now with the way the game has changed, the way college basketball has changed, the way the the landscape of everything has changed. I I think you really need someone who wants to be at Temple. So I think Bruiser is worthy of consideration. Again, I've heard that he is very interested in the job. Do not know if he's interviewed yet. Well, as we said at the top of the show, we promised you that we would be talking to Deontay Christmas, one of the best to ever play at Temple. And Deontay has been kind enough to to join us here on The Scoop. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. It's a pleasure. Always good to talk to y'all guys. So I appreciate you uh, taking time for us. So obviously, and he, we got so much to ask you about. Really appreciate your time. You, you just talked to yeah, Mike. Yeah, Jensen. No you just talked to Mike Jensen at the Philadelphia Inquirer about Matt Langle as, as Temple now after four seasons parted ways with Aaron McKee. And people can, of course, uh, check out that story. Now you obviously you played for Matt when he was at Temple as an assistant on Fran Dunphy's staff. You were very complimentary of him. And I know he's not maybe the certainly not if they if they do choose to interview him, if I'm not sure if the interest there is mutual, but could be one of the guys we'll assume that could be in the mix for the job. Deontay, what yeah. what makes him you talked to, to to Mike Jensen about it? And for our listeners here who maybe didn't get the chance to check out the story, what makes Matt a good coach in your eyes? And why do you think he would be a good fit at Temple or wherever he ends up? Man, Matt is a, a great guy all around the board, man. Just um Great coach, great human man, great uh, family guy. But um, overall, he's a player's coach. And um, I think he gets the best out of his guys. As you can see at Colgate, he's just like doing very, very well. Um, he's probably turned Colgate into a household name in the Patriot League. He's what, coach of the year four years in a row, I believe, or four times. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just did an amazing job there. And, and I know how many of a job he can do at Temple because, you know, when he was there, you know, he got the best out of me. He got the best out of a lot of guys. And, you know, he actually, he was one of the main reasons why we won those back-to-back titles and why Temple just succeeded so much when he was there. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, a, he's a great coach, man. He knows his ex's nose. Um, again, he's a player coach. You know, he helped me through a lot of stuff outside of basketball. So, um, man, I think without him, man, I don't know how my career would probably end it. And um, also Coach Dunphy and the rest of the staff, but he played a major part in that for me. Mm-hmm. You also mentioned in the story with Mike that that Matt is a good recruiter, and I think maybe sometimes yeah. that's an underrated aspect of his career because you know whether oh, it was, whether it was fair or unfair, the the one knock on Fram was that okay he brought his whole staff with him from Penn, yeah. and he only won a couple of tournament games. But Matt was one of the guys that moved on and got another job. And, and some Temple fans yeah. may know this and some may not, but he was a lead recruiter on Juan Fernandez down in Argentina. And he made you know multiple oh, trips man. down there and locking him up. And that here's a guy who hit the game winning shot to get Dunf his first NCAA tournament win. What makes Matt a good recruiter in your eyes? What would you what led you to say that? Again, he's a, 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 a player's coach. He's not going to, He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to hold no punches. Whatever he says, it's it, that's what it is. 
And um, he's a very relatable guy, um, down to earth. And even my, going into what, my senior year, I believe, he was just telling me, like, you know, he's going to get some guys to come in and we're going to, you know, we're not going to fall off. Mm-hmm. And he, he did that. My, well, my junior year, junior, senior year. And, you know, I, I think that the whole staff, again, did a great job of bringing in Lavoy, um, um, Juan, and you know, Ramon Moore, and Michael Eric, and all those guys, man. They did a great job of recruiting. And it's crazy that when I look at Temple now, it's, it's like tough. They can't get a lot of inner city guys. And, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering why, but it's, it's crazy. But he, he was, you know, going to North Philly. He was in South Philly. He was, you know, Ramon was in the heart of South Philly. Those guys were going South Philly. These guys come from the Ivy League. But if they wanted you, they was going to get you. And they was going to do anything necessary, to, you know, within the guidelines to get you. And I think they did a great job of, of doing that. So he's definitely a great recruiter as much as he is a coach. Now I'm going to put you on the spot here. Let, do you think he'll have interest in the Temple job with, like, the way the game has changed? I, I really do. If you, if you could check my Instagram handle, I've been advocating for him on my Twitter. I've been posting him and saying, mm-hmm. like, please, couple, if you can – go after this guy because he is like the guy and you know he dm me and we talk i talked to a few of his family members and they was like you know thank you and just and checking up on me but um i i just i just hope he get a shot if, if even if he does want the job mm-hmm. i will hope he do but um i think i think he would be a, a great um choice for these guys there was a couple few a few other names on that list that i like that i'm familiar with um kim english yeah he's a, a friend of mine a guy i played against and I was around him for a little bit. I think he he did a great job where he was as well. But um, you know, right now for me, I think it's I think Matt Lang should come in and try and try his luck. Just come and try to change things around. Mm-hmm. Deontay, what? How different of a job is it now with with name, image, and likeness? And you've you've seen you know, yeah. you've still talked to so many of your former teammates. You played this game yeah. at a high level. You played in the NBA, but the game has changed. Recruiting has changed. Like some high school oh, kids so are getting left behind. It, guys are recruiting yeah. the portal every day. We might yeah. have talked about this last time we had John. Like coaches maybe feel like they can't develop a guy. They can't coach a guy as hard now because they yeah. feel like he might just say, "Forget it. I'm going to leave." How much? Do yeah. you think, how much do you think the, the the job has changed now? What's going to be different about the Temple job now than you know when Dumpf took it over, when Aaron took it over four years ago? Yeah, I mean, it's pros and cons to it. Um, for me, to, you know, I feel bad for some of the high school kids because now you have these colleges that don't even look at high school kids. They're just going right to the portal. Mm-hmm. And when I was coming up or when, when Dunk was recruiting, it was, you know, we had to go to high schools and, you know, we had our fair chance coming out of high school, but now it's tough. And then even if you're a college coach, you have to re-recruit your kids every year or they're leaving. Yeah. You just got to keep it happening for four years. So it's just, it, it, it sucks, man, but, you know, it's a gift and a curse. You have some schools, <clears throat> excuse me, you have some smaller schools that are benefiting from it, and then you have some bigger schools that are, you know, losing from it, you know, so it's, it's a gift and a curse, man. I just, again, wish him the best of luck with that, man. It's tough. I just saw how Temple, you know, lost their best guy last five games, and it's tough, man. With this, with this, um, the NIL and everything, these kids want to get paid, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Because I'm sure when I was, if I was in the Temple and doing what I was doing for the university, I would have wanted to get paid as well. I'm sure Temple would have probably found a way to do that, make that happen. But, you know, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Mm-hmm. These days, it's really tough. And I, and, I'm, and I was talking to a couple of people. I was like, that Temple job is tough right now. The next person I come in there, I have to really do some damage control. Yeah, but you took the you kind of really segued into my next question here. Whether it's Matt Lang or Kim English, Bruiser Flynn, anybody who comes in and takes this yeah. job, what advice would you give them as somebody who played here and you're still in Philly, yeah. you're still coaching, you still know this university? What what yeah. advice would you give the next guy? Um just, just come in prepared and ready because so the fans are waiting for us to get back to where we were. So just come in, um, locked in, and, and you know have a plan for the next for the next few years, and um, just attack it. Um, I believe the job can get done the correct way. You know our fan base is itching and waiting for 
something good to happen. You know, I know I I don't think nothing really sparked you know our Temple fans in a in a minute. So we just sitting back and waiting and being patient. And uh, whoever's the next guy up, man, just come in with a plan and be ready and and um you know, just get things going, man. Because we're waiting and ready. I know I am. Mm-hmm. Hey, Deontay, in your opinion, why do you think Temple fell short this season? I know. Yeah, I know how disappointed Aaron is and, and how disappointed yeah. the staff was. They felt they'll tell you they felt they had the pieces this year and it and it didn't yeah, work. I did. oh, why do you why do you think where from from where you sit, where do you think where do you think things went wrong? Honestly, um, you know, I'm not there every day, but in the summer I was there, these guys were working hard, they were in there, I was in there talking to those guys a lot. Um, you know, I just think they were very inconsistent this year. You know, they'll they'll beat a team like Houston, then lose to a team like, you know, you know, who knows, Wagner. I was at both games. So it was like that's like really inconsistent. You know, you had battles starting, coming off the bench. You know, Aaron was and I think great. I think Aaron was doing a, a good job, a great job in and how he was handling everything and then doing what he was doing. But you know, every, there was a little inconsistent, a little inconsistency over there at times. So um Again, I, I thought Aaron was a great coach. I thought that I love their staff with Chris, my former teammate. Um, so um, I don't know. I just I just thought it was really inconsistent this year. It was time during the season. I was like, okay, this is the turning point. Because when I was at Temple, you know, we had a game or two that was like, okay, this is our turning point. Then we had run off eight in a row, mm-hmm. nine in a row, going into the tournament. So we like, okay, we found our groove. Temple this year in the last few years to win two, lose four, win two, lose three, like very, very inconsistent. And they just kind of find their consistency. You know, they need a leader over there. You know, every year we knew who our leaders was. Chris Clark was a great leader when I was there, so we followed his lead. Um, I think my, my senior, I did a good job of leading my group. Uh, Marty Collins, he's the one that, you know, I, I, I learned from him. He was a great leader for me. And him and Antoine Robinson, so we always was under great leaders. And I think that's what Temple was missing, man. Just a great leader. Somebody's going to lead them and just say, yo, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing things. And you know, we had a culture. And I think Temple missing that culture right now. They need to, they need to build a culture and, and figure things out. Mm-hmm. Deontay, do you still talk to, you know, to a lot of your teammates and alumni? Uh, you know? A few. A few. And, and, you know, what, uh, what... To... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I talked to, um, you know, me and Samaj is really close. I talked to Samaj. I talked to Ryan a lot. Chris, obviously, because he's coaching. I'm, I'm coaching and he's recruiting. So I, I, I talked to him a lot, a lot. Uh, I just talked to Louis Guzman the other day. A um, few guys I keep in touch. Oh, Mark Tindall, obviously, that's like a good friend of mine. So, yeah, I talked to a couple of those guys. What, what's the consensus among, you know, you guys that, were, you know, once proud owls that, you know, led this program to yeah. success. What's the consensus amongst you guys on, you know, how to get back on track? Uh, man, whatever we got to do. Like, I would actually just talk to Shiz Austin. He hit DM me yesterday, two days ago. I was like, man, what's going on with Temple, man? I'm just like, man, I don't know. He like, we got to get it together. And I'm like, man. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm always advocating and pushing. I have kids that I believe in Division One around the city, and I'm always telling them, yo, Take a look at Temple. I got, even though I'm at Crystal Ray, I got kids that, that from Newman, from Newman Garetti that I really love. And I'm pushing them, go to Temple. How do you look like Temple? And I'm talking to them and other kids from other schools. I'm always speaking to them about our school. So, you know, even though I'm I'm at my school, I'm still uh, Temple Owl. You know? And then if you ask me about Temple, I'm, yeah, go. <laughs> I'm going to definitely tell you to go. So, um, yeah, man, I'm just trying. What I, I'm just trying. I'm doing my part. Whatever I can do, and then if they need me there, and if I was to get a call and sit on the bench and you know help out, but I'm you know I'm still in tune with the high school kids. I'm locked in. I'm all around the city every day. So if, I, if they need me there, man, they need something, and I can definitely, I'm definitely all for it. And I'm definitely helping helping my my school out and trying to get them back to where they need to be. You mentioned, you know, they don't really get as many guys from around the city anymore. Do you feel like they need more people like you and guys that are tapped in with the with the local recruits on their bench to try to turn that around? No, hundred percent, man. I, I hear people talking. I hear schools and, and guys from other schools, high schools, like you know, couple don't really have nobody that we can that we really in tune with or, or that we can 
that that's who's gonna develop my kid or who's gonna and I'm like, well, Chris is why are you not there? And I'm just like, you know, it's not my time to be there yet. And he's like, well, if you yeah, we can get some titty kids, it's like, you know, it's it's up to Tubble. You know, it's Tubble's job to, to do that, to get guys there that's gonna be in tune with our city. I don't think there's a, a inner city team, I don't say LaSalle, and I was just having a conversation with friends of mine, and it was I said it. Temple, LaSalle, Penn, the whole city six, you know, when we had Philadelphia players, that's when we were the most successful in like 20 years. Every time there's a Philadelphia kid or any of those teams, they were successful. You know, when you don't really have inner city kids on, in, on your team in the inner city, it's, it's like, I don't know, that helps out with the fans. You know, it helps to bring the fans out more. It just, I don't know, it makes it more competitive around the city. So it's tough, man. I think I think the city the city six need to start recruiting more from from the inner city, man. They should. And you, you talked about you know uh, this past season at Crystal Ray you on camp Kyle Sample staff over there. Yeah. You know, how is this season? Where do you feel you are now as a coach? You know, uh, man, are you finally feeling you. like you're settling into that role? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure, man. Last year we fell short in the final four. My first year, and this year we actually won the first championship in our school history. Won twenty six and six. Um, we did well. I got two Division One players. One's a sophomore now. My name is Devin Booker. One is Josh White. She's headed to Lafayette. Um, so, yeah, man. I think we did really well. Um, coach Duffy came to a few of my games to show me some love, to watch me coach. So, me and him just chopped it up a lot this season. You know, I got some advice from him and things like that. And So, yeah, it was, it was good, man. I, mean, I think it was a very successful year, and I'm just happy. I'm starting um, my first year with AAU this summer. I can't wait for that. So I'm just, I'm just staying on the scene, man, staying locked in. And how's that? You, know, you give us a little insight on that AAU team. What's that What's that going to look like? Oh, man. Uh, coaching with Kalo Elite, the 16, the 10th grade team. So I probably have about four or five divisional players on that team. I have, um, again, Devin Booker, Kyle Shearhoster, uh, the kid Meech from uh, the Hill School. Um, yeah, I have a lot of uh, good kids, man. So, I, again, I can't wait to get on the circuit because this is my first year on the circuit to see the other talent around the uh, country. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. But I can't wait. You know, there's a few uh, Temple guys that's in coaching now. You know, Khalif Wyatt's up at Westchester. You're at Crystal Ray. Yeah, Louis yeah, Guzman yeah. Is yeah. With Dwayne Killings up there at Albany. Uh, you know, John yeah. Brennan's an assistant at Newman Garetti. What's those conversations like talking to those guys? Like, man, we... We used to play, and now, you know, we're on the sidelines. Oh, yeah. Uh, me and Khalif, actually, it was funny. We were talking this summer, and he was telling me about his situation at college and all that. And uh, I, I didn't really chop it up with Luke. Me and Lou was actually talking about um, about Coach um, Coach Lango, but that was really it. And, but, um, yeah, man, it's just we are just transitioning, man. We're getting older, and we're just trying to get a game back. I said we 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 learned so much and we we we've been taught so much. It's time to give it back. You know, back back then when I was a kid, we didn't really have too many, you know, professionals that were had to, gave the time to, you know, give back to us. You know, we we see these guys on TV, we see these guys out in the park and whatever playing around, but we don't get to be have one on one time with these guys. And that's a, that's what I want to give back to the to the community, to to, to the kids that, that was in my position. Just give them the time. That's why I'm, I like high school so much. Because these kids, really, you know, they listen, they locked in, and they you know, they still know who I am. They recognize who I am. So just being around them and they listening, they they learning from me, it, it feels good, man. How far do you want to go with coaching? Because like you said, high school coaching is a very intimate thing. Yeah. That KLO program has been pretty good. Uh, Miguel Boca Chica has done a good job over there. Uh, you know, how yeah, far do you want to go with this coaching thing? As far as it takes me, man, like um, people text me all the time right now, and I just, as far as it takes me, like I said, like I said, if it's a, if a job that makes sense at the college level, NBA level, you know, if it makes sense for me, um, you know, because I'm not just going to wear for, 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 oh, because well, they're giving me this or they give, nah, I'm, if I like it and I, and, I, and, I, and I think it's good for me at the time, then I, I'm going to take it. So, like, you know, as far as, as, far as it takes me, college, then, and, and that's it, then college, NBA, then NBA, so. Yeah, to take me. Before we let you go, one of the last things I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you mentioned Dumpf earlier. You came to to check out a couple of your games. My God, my I God. wanted to uh, wanted to ask you about the job that he did at LaSalle because 
you know, with a roster that's probably half as talented as anyone else in that league, they go 15 and 19, but then he won two games up in Brooklyn, the A-10 tournament, really had them playing some good basketball at the end of the season. I'm assuming you're not surprised, right? No, not at all. Like, Duffy is an amazing coach, man. He's like, he gets the best out of, I don't care if he had my high school team playing out there, he's going to get the best out of them. He's going to make them win some games. So, Coach Dunf is probably one of the best coaches, in, is, is one of the best coaches in America, man. So I'm not surprised at anything that he does. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that that's my guy, man. We came in, we started together. You know, he's, you know, a reason for, for a lot of my success, man. Me and him talk all the time. He's constantly checking up on me, constantly checking on my family. Um, yeah, not, no, not only just me, he does that with all his guys. So, mm-hmm. Man, Duffy, Duffy did a great job. He invited my team to a practice. So I look at so those guys got to see him and you know in action and how a college practice is really ran. He invited my team to a game. Like he just he just did a lot, man. He he's he's all around good dude and, a, and, a, and an amazing coach, man. So I'm definitely not surprised at what he did. I actually the crazy thing is I actually thought he was gonna make it to the championship. That's crazy. I was like, yo, don't be surprised if don't get it get the LaSalle to the championship. Don't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, they fell just short against Fordham. They had a, they yeah. had a nice run up there, really nice run up. Yeah, yeah, one, man. So I was, I wasn't surprised at all, man. But yeah, yeah, that's my. I think he's doing a great job there. I hope you know he continues um, over there and continue to you know be successful. Deontay, it was it was great catching up with you. Really appreciate you taking Always. some time, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon, bud. All right, big thank you to Deontay Christmas for joining us. Always a big pleasure to talk to him. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to him down the line. Real interesting news, Javon, about him joining Kalo Elite. I didn't, I didn't know that was, uh, didn't know that was happening. But yeah, yeah that's like, that's big with team final is. folding. Mm-hmm. Kalo is like the team of the city now, in my estimation. Yeah, um, Miguel Boca Chica, West Catholic's head coach, has done a great job with that program. Um, you know, Deontay loves Temple. He, he said how much he, you know, tries to recruit for them, and he's not even on the payroll. So. Him getting that Kalo job, especially with the young group, he's coaching the sophomores pretty much. Mm-hmm. That means he can get them over to Temple early to at least be on their radar, and Temple can try to win some guys over with the early recruiting. So that's that's big for the program. Yeah, big for whoever the next coach is and the next staff is. Uh, just some spring football stuff to touch on before we uh, dive into the mailbag here to finish things out. Temple did officially announce – the hires of Tyree Foreman as the running backs coach and Marcus Berry as the new chief of staff. We had reported those hires a couple of weeks ago so that if you are an Al Scoop subscriber, that is not new news to you. Tyree Foreman, if you've been a fan of the program for a while, you know that he's coming back as the running backs coach. He was at Temple when Bernard Pierce was around, Matt Brown was around, returns back in that position. And then Marcus Berry, uh, in Marcus Berry, they're getting a very connected recruiter, had been at Maryland. Uh, and as the recruiting director there. So on paper, it looks like a pretty good hire for Stan Drayton. The ironic thing there is as the chief of staff, he's replacing Everett Withers. Now, the interesting thing this week is that Football Scoop was the first to report that Everett Withers, you know, obviously that he had left to go down to FAU and he's now coming back to be Temple's defensive coordinator, of course, with DJ Elliott leaving and going to the Eagles as their linebackers coach. Football Scoop reported that again. They were the first to report this week. Talked to a couple of sources who were able to confirm it and said that he is back in the building. Temple has not made a formal announcement about it yet, but it does seem uh, to be the case that Everett Withers will be back with Temple to be Stan's defensive coordinator. He talked earlier this week about you know wanting to try to find somebody who could run a similar system, something aggressive. He said we owe it to the kids. And more important, he said he wanted to get that figured out before the end of spring ball. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I heard with the Withers thing uh, through the grapevine that even if he gets hired sometime soon, well, on board, official, whatever, back with the program, the, the hiring won't be announced until at least two, three weeks after he's already been on the job. So um, it won't get confirmed. But yeah, John, I heard the same thing as you was. Mm-hmm. back in the building. And it, it makes sense for Temple. Like you said, Stan wanted somebody who can run a similar system mm-hmm. and could be in here before spring ball. So there'd be no problems with installing the playbook. And I mean, ever did a good job filling in for Stan. The, that whole week Stan was out with, I don't know, the, the walking Ebola or whatever he had. Um, <laughs> and Everett did a good job filling Dr. in that week. Dr. Javon. 
Dr. Javon diagnoses Stan Drayton with walking in Poland. Listen, he was. He, you, you're right. He, he was like he was out for a week. He was like, I don't know what it was, but it was a bad virus. And he came back Monday and he was still beat up. Like I mm-hmm. felt so bad for him. I was like, hey, coach, take it easy. He looked at me. He's like, thanks, man. Like he he was exhausted even when he came back. He was so. sweating at the end of that press conference. And it's not because we were like grilling him with uh, super controversial questions. He just did not look good or sound good he had his power aid with him needed his electrolytes like this is a true story by the way <laughs> yeah um there is actually you know javon and i are recording this on friday afternoon we'll hopefully get this out to you pretty soon chris wees and temple's offensive line coach and select players we don't know who we're getting tomorrow but are talking tomorrow so uh stick with alscoop.com we'll have more spring football coverage max denenberg has a story up on the site now about Mahim cargo who's going into his second season playing safety, uh, got to talk to Kamar Wilcox and yesterday the Florida transfer who could uh, potentially figure into a big role in what is really kind of a pretty deep and talented safety room now uh, with him. We've already got a story up on him too. Yep, yeah. So uh, pretty conceivably, you know, from the outside looking in, like a, a fairly deep safety room. So again, our spring football coverage will continue in the midst of the craziness of Temple looking for a new basketball coach. I've got a lot of mailbag questions to get to here uh, to close us out on this episode of The Scoop. Again, these are coming from screen names from our message boards. First one is TU1834. Two questions here. Number one, is there anything positive in basketball? Number two, what should an optimist about the football team like myself be most skeptical about? Is there anything positive in basketball? The Christmas news we just shared. Yeah. I mean, that's you have an alum, you have one of your best players in the history of the program is going to be with, like Javon said, one of the best AAU programs in the city. And one of the not better, even just the city, one of the better, better programs in the East Coast and the region. So, look, I mean, it, this sounds so cheesy, but I guess the positive thing is if you are, and again, I agree with Kyle when we recorded Monday night. Monday was not a happy day in in the state of the program you know, one of Temple's former players, one of the best players in the history of the program, tried after four seasons, could not get it done. They've parted ways. As Kyle said, it's probably the last chance, potentially the last chance you have of a Temple legacy guy really coming and staying for a while. And and we certainly don't rejoice in anybody losing their job, not just Aaron, but the guys that we interact with on on a frequent basis, like Chris Clark, Jimmy Farrity, Monte Ross, those guys. But if you felt like there was a need for a change, I guess the positive thing is you've got some intrigue. You've got some stuff to look forward to. Obviously Temple has to nail this higher, just like they do with any higher. And maybe the positive thing is maybe you think like a, a page is going to be turned and someone else can, can come in and hit the reset button and maybe turn things around. Other than that. Also, oh, Javon, well, Javon is, one yeah. more. Yeah. Um, as it stands, I got on the horn with Miguel Boca Chica uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, as it stands, Zion Stanford is still committed to Temple. Um, he has signed his letter of intent. He, he'll make a final decision on if he will ask out of it or not after Temple hires its new coach. But at least you still got your lone freshman for, mm-hmm. for next season. So I guess that's decent news. And if you want to recruit his teammate uh, at West Catholic, uh, you know, Bud Clark, his recruitment has opened up since Juan Dixon was fired at Coppin. Uh, Bud never signed a letter of intent with 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 Coppin. Uh, so, folks' phone has been blowing up with calls over Bud. That's a dynamic score at the point guard position of Temple were to explore that. I was going to say, is Bud, is, can, you think Bud can play in the American? I think so. Um, height is literally Bud's only deficiency. Mm-hmm. But Bud Clark can score the basketball. Uh, I can't put it any other way than that. That kid can go. He's fast. He's shifty. Uh, he's listed at 5'10". That's, that, that's, that might not be as generous as I'm making it out to be. Uh, he's just so quick, and he's a dog. He's not going to back down on defense. He's going to get in you. He's going to go at you. And there's one thing I know about Boca Chica. He coaches basketball players. Like you're going to leave him and know way more about the game of basketball than you did when you first got to West Catholic. Um, 
I think he can. If Kendrick Davis can play in the conference, granted, not every small man is Kendrick Davis, but mm-hmm. like Bud, Bud's game reminds me very much of Kendrick Davis. So I think you take advantage of that. Interesting. The second part of TU 1834's question, what should an optimist about the football team like myself be most skeptical about? What do you think? What should an optimist be, be skeptical, skeptical about? about? I guess TU 1834 is saying. I can't tell if that's sarcastic or not. I don't know. I don't think, I think he's actually saying, hey, I'm optimistic about the team. Is there anything that I should think of that where I'd kind of check myself and say, hey, don't get too far ahead of yourself. For me, it would be, maybe the one thing I can think about right now is, hey, DJ Elliott's a loss. He's a real loss. And to lose your defensive coordinator at this juncture, obviously they've still got a few weeks left to spring ball. Everett Withers is a familiar, I mean, he's qualified. Everett's qualified for the job. I don't want to make it sound like DJ Elliott's the only guy who could ever be Temple's defensive coordinator, but that's a loss. Maybe you're skeptical about, you know, how does that affect a, 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 a team that really had some momentum going? Like, you know, um, Antoine Smith had talked to us, what was it, last week or the week before, about how, yeah, they need to show up the run defense, no question, but he feels like they have better players who can make make plays in space. So they weren't a good run defense, but they they were an aggressive defense. And it wasn't just Leighton Jordan and Darian Varner getting sacks. It was other guys. It was Jordan McGee. They were spreading things around there. So maybe you're a little skeptical about you know that that much of a loss, like losing a coordinator, or maybe you're skeptical about the offensive line. But I don't know, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, I think you covered all bases. Uh, I guess the only other thing would be, I, I don't know, because we got good news from the receivers room with, with Dante Wright uh, and Ahmad Anderson's only going to be better this season. So I, I don't know. I guess it's if the receivers room doesn't live up to the hype of spring ball and they wind up deciding not to go get an additional piece, in the summer, I guess that's the only thing to be paranoid about. At or, maybe the moment. The run, or the running backs, maybe. is Or the running backs not panning out or the offensive line still struggling. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think those two are the obvious things that everyone knows. Um, or, or, or maybe not. You know, never assume in this business. So I, I'll go with those. Mm-hmm. Uh, next next question here. The screen name is P. Fewer My. How important do you think the NIL name, image, and likeness will be to the next potential head coach in their decision-making process? For example, do we think it could tip the scale one way or another in their decision? I think it could. I think it's fair. need somebody who embraces it in today's climate. It's that simple. Well, I think there's that. And I think that if you are that next person interviewing for the job, I think you're asking Temple, do you have a collective? How much progress has it made? What are you doing to support name, image, and likeness? Because these guys, again, if you are leaving, I mean, depending on the candidate, but if you're interviewing for the Temple job and you're betting on yourself, you want to make sure that you're set up for success. And yeah, they'll be asking Temple, what, where are you with NIL? Do we have a chance to get guys out of the portal? Do we have a chance to get guys out of the high school level? Do we have a chance to be working with a collective that can that can offer these kids what they want. So I think it'll very much factor into the decision making process. How much? We'll we'll see. But uh yeah, I think it very much factors into it. Yeah, what, what has to happen though is uh alumni and temple fans such as yourself, P Fear and I, have to have to donate to Temple's NIL collectives and all that stuff. That's 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 just what makes the world go round. Um mm-hmm. So you know, you listen. You want Temple to get back on track? Pay for what you want. That's just just that's just life in capitalistic America. You got to pay for what you want. <laughs> Sometimes you got to pay for what you need. But hey, you know, like the fact that I have to pay for water is is, is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> huh? It's water. Uh, yeah, you know, whatever. It's been a while since you've had a good old school rant. I like that. The Hick is the next screen name. The Hick always has several questions. Today is no different. We'll read these off in rapid fire. Well, no, we'll read them one at a time. How many candidates do they anticipate interviewing the Hick? We have no idea. Unless we are sitting in that room with Arthur Johnson, whatever this, the, the search committee is. I don't know. Don't have a magic number for you. What are the non-negotiable criteria for finding the next coach? You want to take this one first, Bob? 
What are your non-negotiable criteria for finding the next Temple basketball coach? I've been told it is non-negotiable that the next head coach has to be an offensive-minded coach that runs a uh, 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 offense that uses a lot of motion. Um, so I know that for for a fact. Uh, everything else, yeah, you got to know what's going on with the NIL. You got to be connected to the area or be, at least be able to be connected to the area. Got to know how to recruit. Um, adapt to the new age kid, know how to use the portal and not let the portal use you, know how to recruit high school players, have the balance of age and youth. Uh, but yeah, like I said, the one guaranteed non-negotiable that I know that Arthur Johnson is looking for is an offensive minded head coach. Yeah. Um, I would say too, in, in addition to all those things, I think the next guy coming in, the next person coming in, really has to just embrace everything that you need to do to win at Temple, which means beyond everything you just said, Javon, like getting getting the fans engaged, getting students engaged, like establishing okay. a culture, a, a culture of grittiness and accountability. That and even just in a forward facing way, um, you know, doing things like I mean, this doesn't I'm not talking about on the court stuff, but what about the old school methods of going back and talking to the marketing side of things and saying, Hey, let's start going into residence halls and knocking on doors and delivering pizzas and saying, hi, I'm, I'm Matt Langle. I'm Temple's new basketball coach. Hi, I'm Kim English. I'm Bruiser Flint. I'm your new Temple basketball coach. Love to see you at the Leah Cora center Friday night stuff. That's going to catch people off guard and saying, wow, Temple hasn't done that in a while. Yes. They've done like, you know, the calling season ticket holders with phone campaigns and stuff like that. But really kind of just diving in. Temple's not a place where you kind of just sit back and let everything fall into place around you. You have to be a doer. And of course, the other stuff we've already, you know, we already covered it. You just covered it. You have to, I think you should be willing to come in and say, okay, where are we with NIL? Um, Where are we with connecting with high schools, connecting with AU coaches, being honest with them? about what our priorities are like, Hey, yes, we are going to recruit the portal. If you hear about us recruiting the portal, we don't want to seem disingenuous because we need a mix of being able to get guys who can help us get old and stay old, but we aren't going to forget about the city, but we are going to recruit the DMV. We are going to recruit nationally, but we want you to know what direction we're heading in. I mean, you have to be, you have to be engaged. You can't just be an excess nose guy. And on the flip side of it, you can't be, you can't be uh you can't be just uh you can't be one extreme or the other you can't be like this all smoke no substance and then on the flip side of it all substance and no smoke i mean they they need i mean they need to really nail this higher because like i said to deontay it's a different time than when john cheney took the job it's a different time than when fran Dunphy took the job and it's even a different time than when Aaron McKee took the job uh next question from the hick how is tu monitoring the portal for recruits well the only person who's really kind of monitoring the portal for recruits right now, Chris Clark is kind of like an acting head coach right now, kind of like a placeholder, whether Chris remains on the staff, whether Jimmy Faraday remains on the staff, that's up to the next coach, but it's really going to be the next head coach coming in and looking into the portal and saying, this is who I want. This is who we want. So I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that really, like whether Chris Clark ends up staying at Temple or whether he goes somewhere else, he's monitoring the portal for recruits, whether it's for staying at Temple or whether it's for his next job. I'm sure, Jimmy Fennerty's doing the same thing. I don't know if Monte Ross is going to stay in coaching, but yeah, Temple's monitoring the, the portal for recruits. But it just, you know, in terms of like what's next, that's up to the next head coach. Have they identified who among the Temple players in the portal they want to keep? Again, that's up to the next head coach. I mean, I think any of us with half a brain could say any coach would sure want to keep Jamil Reynolds. He showed tangible progress this year. He'd probably want to keep Zach Kicks. He can shoot the heck out of the basketball. I mean, I've been told that, that Damian Dunn is probably going to go. I think that Aaron McKee would have had a good chance of keeping Dean at Temple. Yeah, I've at been told State. Hicks is probably. Uh, I, if I had to go go with a number, Hicks is 70% out the door. Yeah. Yeah, like this thing could get ripped down to the studs pretty quickly, but 
you can't, it's impossible. You can't really even ask the question, have they identified who among Temple players in the portal they want to keep? The heck, they don't have a head coach right now. <laughs> they can't, who's identifying that? The only person who could really be identifying that is a Chris Clark or a Jimmy Fennerty if they're retained by the next head coach. And then maybe that next head coach, again, whether it is Bruiser Flint, you know, uh, Kim English, uh, you know, any, any Mike Morrell, any potential candidate, and I say potential candidate because nothing is obviously set in stone, that new candidate comes in and says, okay, who do we like here? Who fit in? Who showed up to practice? Who did this? Who did that? Otherwise, there's no official person right now identifying who they want to keep because there's no head coach. How does the athletic department plan to win back the trust and loyalty of its alumni and fan base? We don't work for the athletic department. That's a that's a question for the athletic department. Can't be uh, any more playing with you there. Yes, yeah, so send a letter to the director. Yes. Uh, JHG722 is the screen name I was going to ask with the importance of NIL on the portal. And I think this is an interesting and a very good question, JHG. With the importance of NIL on the portal, how important do you think Philly Temple ties are for Temple's next head coach compared to pre-NIL and portal? I don't think they're as important. I really don't. Could you? It's a, is it a great thing if you get a Philly guy? Sure. Does Matt Langle qualify as a Philly guy? Sure. I mean, he he grew up in South Jersey, went you know played at Morristown Friends and Morristown High School, played at Penn. But you know, like Aaron McKee was a Philly guy, but for whatever reason, Aaron McKee didn't get it done. You can't just be a Philly guy and then people are going to come to you. I think it's a Chris Clark's a Philly guy. He is. But Aaron is a Philly guy. Jimmy Finnerty. Mm-hmm. I guess can classify and look at how many guys they've lost out on. We just watched Maryland yesterday with Dante Scott and Hakeem Hart, Hart from mm-hmm. MOTEP and Roman mm-hmm. get West Virginia out of there. And they're playing Bama in the round of 32. They're not at yeah. Temple. We just watched yeah. Michigan State beat USC today. A.J. Hogarth's up in East Lansing, not on North Broad. Uh, mm-hmm. Ace Baldwin, uh, a Baltimore guy, uh, played in the Black Cage of Plastic up here in the Philly area every year, good relationship with some guys up here. Mm-hmm. You know, VCU just lost to St. Mary's with him on their roster, not Temples. Uh, Jalen Duran was at Memphis in the conference, not at Temple. So, yep. you know, it doesn't matter. Justin Edwards isn't giving Temple a look. He's going down to Kentucky. So, it you know, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Temple's had a whole bunch of Philly guys for the past four years, and they haven't been able to get Philly guys. I don't think your head coach needs to be a Philly guy, but I think that your your next head coach, if he's not a Philly guy, he needs to have a guy who knows Philadelphia on his staff. Yeah. But I think you could spread things out where wherever you feel tied in, if it's a Philly guy, it's a DMV guy, it's a North Jersey or New York guy. But no, I, JHG, I think that's a great question because... Dan Skillings. Can't forget about him. Yeah. Like you really, again, like I've talked to probably a half dozen current assistant coaches this week. And all of them have said the same thing. Everything is different now. The portal has changed everything. NIL has changed everything. And any fan could say, well, yeah, no kidding. I already know that. But it has deeply, deeply changed everything. It has deflated some coaches. And it's not that they don't want to see kids get paid and do well, but the management of it, the quick change of it, can you really develop a player? It will affect high school recruiting. So I don't think it's as imperative to get a Philly guy in the head coaching position as it is to get the right guy in that head coaching position, but the right guy would want somewhat or a Philly presence on their staff. That's a must, but I think that's a great question. Diamond and broad is the next mailbag question here. It's a football question. How different will Everett Withers' scheme, defensive scheme, be? I enjoyed watching the attacking defense last year. Probably not that much different. I think Stan Drayton answered that question for us back on Tuesday. And, I mean, Everett, even though he was the chief of staff, Everett was very involved. He's qualified. I I think it'll be, you know, whether he's talking simulated pressures or where he's bringing pressure from or whether it's a three-down front or four-down front or they say they're multiple I don't think it'll be that different. I would be shocked if Everett Withers starts talking and says, you know what, we want to be more of a bend, but don't break defense. We want to really like just, you know, we'll give you the stuff in front of us and and kind of lay back. I'd be shocked if he said that. I don't think it'll be that much different. Any Anything you'd want to weigh in on here, Javon? 
I think you covered the bases. Yeah. Um, and a basketball question, two basketball questions from Diamond Abroad. Number one, any guess on how long the coaching hire takes? I It's a guess. It's an educated guess more than anything. I think it could be wrapped up in a week or 10 days, but we'll see. I don't think it lasts longer than the tournament. Yeah. Probably not probably. even probably not even into final four weekend. Uh maybe not actually I'll be honest, maybe not into next weekend. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't know if it's uh still going by the time we're watching Sweet 16 basketball. Mm -hmm. Number two, what will it take for the next coach to make inroads in Philly recruiting short of just dropping bags of cash off? I think we already covered that. I think really just going back in, reintroducing yourself to coaches. And really just selling them on your vision and being genuine and honest with them and letting them know, hey, we are going to recruit our tails off in the city of Philadelphia, but we are also going to be recruiting D.C. We're going to be recruiting the DMV. We're going to be recruiting North Jersey and South Jersey. We are going to be recruiting the portal because we want to create a program for all of you that wins and is attractive for your kids to come to so, yes, we want to connect with you in Philly, but really going in and telling them, like, this is our vision and our mission. So, yeah, and telling them about what Temple offers, what Temple's fan base, what alumni are offering from a, from a, a name, image, and likeness perspective. Here are the opportunities. You know, again, coaches can't go out and offer their own NIL money, but they really need to just go back in and reintroduce themselves, but be honest. You know, because I think people always gravitate. Well, it's got to be a Philly thing. It's got to be a Philly thing. Philadelphia is part of, but not all of the equation here. It can't be all of the equation. I mean, I'm a guy who's grown up in this area, still lives in this area, but it can't just be a Philly coach. It can't just be Philly recruiting. You need players wherever you can get them. And Temple is just not right now. They're not going to get the Justin Edwards of the world. To get the Justin Edwards of the world, you need to win and you need NIL opportunities for these kids. They're not there yet. So I think you need to come in and just be genuine with the high school coaches and with the AU coaches uh, in the city. Two more questions here. The first one from the screen named Matt Deebs. It's a football question here. How long do we think the offensive line will shake? How do we think, excuse me, how do we think the offensive line will shake out come September? I trust Chris Wiesinghan. It's only the second offseason under the regime, but they need to take a step forward if their offense is going to progress. Uh, we definitely agree with you there. How do we think the offensive line will shake out come September? I think we were talking about this maybe a couple shows ago, right, Javon? I think that an early, early guess, Rodriguez at center. I, I continue to be told, even though he's raw and he's young, that, that, that Melvin Ciani, that they're fairly high on Melvin Ciani, they really seem to like Diego Brajas. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe your tackles are James Faminu at left tackle, um, Victor Stofel at right tackle, maybe Rodriguez is your center, and maybe it's Siani and Barajas at guards. Of course, we'll hear, I'd be shocked if Chris Wiesenham, when he talks to reporters tomorrow, does not talk again about position versatility, having these guys cross-trained and all that stuff. I, I think it has a chance to be better just if if – you know, again, I'm going to sound like a Chris Weezy apologist, but again, I've, I've I've covered the guy for a long time, known the guy for a long time. I've seen him develop Deion Dawkins. I've seen him develop guys like Matt Hennessy. I mean, like the guy is a good coach. So I think anytime you give Chris Weezy more time with a line, it's going to be better. What those pieces are going to be is going to be interesting. I think they'll be better and I think they'll be athletic. I think you'll see them. You'll see some youth and you'll see some mistakes, but I don't think you're going to see mistakes just because they're too short or their arms are too short. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. No, I'm with you on that one. Last one to finish things out here. <laughs> uh, the screen name is what, what TU more likely to happen first an on-campus football stadium or temple making the final four. Oof. What do you think? <laughs> stadium. Yeah. At least they got that planned out. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing planned out about a final well, four. We'll see. I mean, both both would be a challenge. Uh, the, yeah, I'll say a football stadium. To be clear, I have not talked to anybody at Temple who says that a football stadium on campus is imminent. I'm not trying to get anybody's hopes up, but 
if I were to uh, guess what would be more likely to happen, maybe a football stadium. Tough question. What, what to you, but a good one. So that'll do it for this week. Thank you, Javon, for, for joining me and not deserting. No, it's always uh, it's such a pleasure. Like, uh, well, Kyle and Kyle and Caden off this week, spending time with their families. Kyle's at a, at a wedding down in Florida. Caden's had known for the weekend. So, uh, big thank you. Caden's going to be an uncle again. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's heading home for his sister's baby shower. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Caden. Happy for you. I didn't know he was already an uncle. You learn something neither, new every day. Neither did I. Neither did I. Yeah. But thank you to again to Deontay Christmas for, for joining us. Always a pleasure talking to Deontay. And uh, thank you to all of you for joining us. Again, our, our listenership has really continued to grow. We could not do it without you again. The Scoop is brought to you now by our new sponsor, Greenspan and Greenspan Injury Lawyers. Thank you to them as well for their support of The Scoop. Hope you all have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon.